Things don't always go right on the water, but sometimes things do go right. Like for Laura Valeris last week, who wound up winning our Drainplug Mafia Tumblr on last week's episode of Boating News of the Week. Don't worry, we're going to give another one away this week, but it'll be on Boneheaded Boaters, so be sure to turn in Sunday for that. But let's go ahead and get this week's episode of Boating News of the Week started. Our first incident to make the boating news this week is going to take us down to Ecuador, where this past week the Brazilian naval tall ship White Swan wound up colliding into a pedestrian bridge near Guayaquil. Currently it's under investigation to see what actually caused the incident, but locals say this actually is not that uncommon, that apparently there's a well-known exceptionally strong current in this area, and this is not the first time a vessel has struck the bridge when trying to navigate it. Once Ecuadorian authorities learned the vessel was in trouble, they actually dispatched several emergency tugs to come try and help the vessel navigate the bridge. Unfortunately for them, it just did not quite work out. The tugs, once they arrived, were unable to get the vessel under control before it struck the bridge. As can be seen here, once the collision happens, the vessel comes under a hard list. Fortunately, the tugs are still on scene and were able to reconnect to this vessel and get it pulled out from underneath the bridge before any major damage was caused to the bridge and before the white swan can capsize. Here you can see the larger tug is responding to this vessel and is working to get it freed from the bridge itself. Currently, the White Swan is still in port in Ecuador being assessed by officials for any major damage before it makes its return trip to its home port of Rio de Janeiro back in Brazil. And there were no injuries reported from anybody on board the White Swan and normally we would say that's a good day but unfortunately this does not end here. Here we'll see this tug begins to pull this vessel out and the smaller tug that immediately responded to this winds up coming back in and tying along the side of the White Swan. Unfortunately the current is pulling so hard the big tug has to continue to pull and all of a sudden the small tug gets caught stern into the current and things go wrong from there. Fortunately, no injuries were reported in this incident either. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us up to Alaska, where this past week the Coast Guard received an emergency call alerting them of a GPS location of a sailing vessel in distress approximately 145 miles west of Sitka. The sailing vessel had found itself in some horrendous weather with a storm blowing off the Alaskan coast with winds up to 70 knots and seas at over 25 foot. The stories coming in report that the sailing vessel actually capsized and rewrited itself, but upon doing so it suffered extreme damage to its sails, its rigging and its rudder, disabling the vessel. Three Coast Guard rescue helicopter crews rushed from the Sitka Air Station to attempt to rescue the vessel. They were trying to do so before it got dark because they knew in these dramatic conditions things were going to be exceptionally difficult to try and pull this rescue off once the sun went down. As the Coast Guard arrives to the scene of the incident, they're able to release one rescue swimmer into the water to try and coax the solo crewmen of this vessel into the water so they can try and pull them out. These pictures will give you the dramatic scene of what it was really like trying to get this person out of the water. Out. And back five. Out. Back ten. Yeah, let's keep up at it like the two yep. o'clock. Yes, sir. Back ten. Back ten. Altitude. In those images you just saw, you witnessed the rescue swimmer and the victim being hit by a 25-foot wave while still attached to the rescue line. The crew actually had to wait for calms in the sets to actually be able to pull these guys back out of the water. Fortunately, the victim was pulled into the helicopter, only showed signs of mild hypothermia, but no other injuries were reported. The vessel actually drifted off during the whole attempt of the rescue. Its whereabouts at this time is currently unknown. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us up to the Jersey Shore, where parts of a state park on the Jersey Shore were closed this past week to fishermen and vehicles after a 68-foot commercial fishing vessel ran aground this past week. The vessel named Bear had a mechanical failure and wound up washing up onto the beach as can be seen in these images here. Officials spent the first several days this vessel was on shore trying to get it pulled back out into the ocean, but unfortunately due to extreme weather conditions, they were unsuccessful. In an effort to try and minimize the possibility of environmental impact, officials wound up removing the fuel from the vessel. It did take almost a week before the conditions calmed down enough for tow boats to actually get out and tow this vessel back offshore. No injuries were reported during the incident. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening out in your waterways, be sure to hit me up on Facebook or Instagram and let me know. And you might see your stories over here, just like Luis de Salzo, Lindsay Ashley, Chris Lorini, Calumet IS, and John German did this week. And if you haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here. If not, we're coming to steal your drain plug.